Um, first of all, I want uh, I want you to um, to speak or to talk about um, in a general basis what happened in in the Sandy Hook shooting in in Newtown, Connecticut. Okay. Well, the broad outlines of the shooting were that a young man named Adam Lanza walked into an elementary school in Connecticut and shot and killed a lot of children and some teachers at a school. Okay. Uh, uh, what do you think was the biggest mistake uh, in the coverage by made by the by the by the media? There were a lot of mistakes. I think by far the biggest though was reporting the wrong name of the shooter. It, okay. A number of outlets reported that Adam Lanza's brother, Ryan Lanza, was the um, suspect in the case, and he was at home in his house in New Jersey at the time and obviously didn't know anything that was happening. Okay, uh, what else? Well, uh, there, there, were, there were any number of um, incorrect things reported at the time. There, there were reports that there were two shooters, there um, were reports that he had been let in by school personnel by mistake. That he had buzzed the door and had been and had been let into the school. Um, there were reports that he had used weapons he didn't use. There there were um, all kinds of details got reported at the time, and and Andrew, that's Andrew. Yeah, can you hear me? Students. Uh, yes, uh, but we had a little uh, a little cut. Okay. So I I I wasn't able to to hear your your answer. Sure. Let um, me try again. Oh, uh, please. Okay. Yeah, a lot of things uh, were, were reported incorrectly at the time. Um, there were reports that there were two shooters. There were reports that a school official had let. Lanza into the school by mistake. There were reports that he had used different weapons than he had used. There, there were reports that another shooter was still on the loose. There were all kinds of things getting out there at, during the coverage of Sandy Hook. And that's not unusual during a breaking news event. It's just very difficult for people to um, put up with when the subject is something so awful as school children getting killed. Okay, um, what do you think was the source of these mistakes? You think those mistakes were normal or you think uh, the coverage uh, was uh, mediocre or, or is it a normal situation what happened uh, in that day? Yeah, um, I don't think the coverage was worse than usual for an event of this magnitude, which is something that's very hard for reporters to get a handle on. It's not as if there were many people in this little town in Connecticut that morning getting ready to do a story like this and knowing who to talk to. What often happens in a situation like this is that there will be a number of law enforcement agencies who come in to help. And different reporters will have relationships with different law enforcement agencies. Some might be state law enforcement, some might be federal law enforcement, some might be local, some might be sheriffs, for example. And different reporters will, will go in, will know people, and will ask them what they're hearing, and then report that stuff on the air. And what you're really getting when you see something like the Sandy Hook coverage is a picture of how incomplete even the police are seeing an event at, at a time. Okay, so you think it's normal? It's, a, it's part of the, of the profession? It's part of the profession, but there's a, it points to a big problem with my profession, which is that even though we're reporting stuff that we don't know very well, that, we've on, that is only uh, as we say in English, hearsay. Um, we often report it with a sense of real authority and 
by not being very transparent about where the news is coming from. And part of that is to protect sources, but part of that I think is also ego on the part of reporters that we want to look like we've gotten scoops that we know more than other people do. And, okay, and yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, well, your, your answer uh, leads me to another question. Um, you think it's possible to avoid the dilemma between the intense pressure of the rivalry between media networks and the demand of the audience and the precision and exactitude of the information? Uh, do you think it, it, it is possible to avoid this dilemma between the pressure of the of the rivalry and the uh, exactitude or the precision of the information? Yes. Well, I mean, one way that you can avoid it is by uh, not reporting anything until you know know much, and uh, that's some news organizations do that. But even even news organizations that are traditionally very careful, like the Associated Press and the New York Times, the Boston Globe make mistakes in breaking news situations. And um, this one was no different. Mistakes are always going to happen in breaking news. There's just no way of avoiding it. Um, what people can do is just be very straightforward about what they do and don't know. And also, you can hold information until you know it better. One thing that's kind of interesting about now is that your audience is a media critic and sort of a help in a lot of times. If you report something that's incorrect and somebody in your audience notices it, you can find out really quickly where you've made a mistake. People are very happy to let you know where you've made a mistake. And if you use your audience as um, part of the news gathering process, you may, re you may uh, emerge with a much more accurate report more quickly than others. Okay, that, that, that's great. Um, uh, a key element in the debate, a key element in the discussion about the, um, the coverage was the, uh, the role that Twitter played. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you, if you have an opinion about that. I think... I th I think Twitter is like everything on the internet. It's simultaneously great and awful. It's, um, you know, it, it allows you to get news out, out quickly. The downside of that is it allows you to get news out quickly. Um, you know, you can, you can very easily report incorrect stuff. But you can also very easily hear from your audience if you've done something incorrectly. And so I think that it's got, it, it's got, uh, it's got real positives to it as well. It's, it's not like you can really blame Twitter. Really what you're blaming when you blame Twitter is human nature. Twitter just connects us with human nature more quickly. Okay, so um, what's What's the um, I don't know how to say this, but um, what's the criteria that the uh, that the news media should uh, follow about Twitter and and how they they how they should manage the information that Twitter uh, brings? Right. Um, I think for information they get on Twitter, they should treat it like any other piece of information. They should consider the source and make sure that they can verify it. For information that they would broadcast on Twitter, I think the best way of looking at that is to ask yourself, is this something that we would report through our traditional channels? through our newspaper or through our television station? And if the answer to that is no, this, is, this would be too, as we say, thin, if that makes sense. 
um, if this is too thinly sourced, that we wouldn't normally report it until we we'd looked into it more. Then I would say keep it off Twitter. Okay. Um, do you 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 think that uh, the the technological advance uh, has become uh, the news media mediocre? Because in an article I read that um, a lot of uh, media networks uh, didn't send um, reporters to the to the to the place of the events to confirm the information that uh, Twitter and other social networks uh, launch to the to the to the public. Do, do you think that media networks have become mediocre? No, I think breaking news has always been pretty mediocre. Um, okay. I think if you if you look back at um, if you look back at, at the Columbine shooting, um, you know, in, in the 90s, a lot of incorrect information came out about that shooting at the time that is still what people associate with it. They still think that the shooters were part of something called the trench coat mafia, that they were uh, people who'd been bullied by other students, and none of that is true. So, um, the, the, I think if anything, what what technology has done is gotten the um, the process of fact checking of some of the bad information that gets out during these events. It's sped up the possibility of getting bad information out of the public record. We knew really quickly what was bad reporting about Sandy Hook. And that's, I know that that, that seems like sort of a, a weird thing to say is like is good, but I think in the whole it's good when we can get this stuff out of the way quicker. Okay, that, that's uh, a great answer because it was a very uh, confusing uh, thing that uh, the, the influence of Twitter and other social networks uh, establishing the in the in the coverage. Well, um, there is an uh, uh, an statement that a lot of journalists um, shared about the coverage of Sandy Hook, and it is that this event, as no other, uh, put in evidence what journalists has become today what journalists is today. Uh, do you think, uh, do you agree with this statement? That's a really interesting statement. I, I think that, that it was a fair reflection of where the industry was at the time of the shooting. And I think that, it, I think that certain things have improved since then. I know that a couple of the outlets that made mi mistakes during the reporting of that have um, instituted new checks to make sure that they don't make the same mistakes again. Because one of the things that happens now is when you fail, you fail very publicly. Everyone knows that you messed up. And the um, ability of technology to sort of spread your mistakes as quickly as it could it can spread your really good reporting has been sobering for many newsrooms. They've realized that it's really important not just to be first but also to be very honest about the information that they're getting. It's still not anywhere near as good as it should be but it's been getting a lot better. I've noticed the last few breaking news stories even though there's been mistakes and there will always be mistakes there has been a, um, a greater appetite on the part of a lot of news organizations to be clear about how tentative what their reporting has been. Okay. Um, in your opinion, um, the, the coverage uh, was okay? It, it was okay to constantly be on air? 
or the media networks should um, stop the, the the coverage, stop the transmission of the of the images uh, at the of, at the place, and continue with another news, or it is correct to um, stay in place and broadcast uh, all the time uh, the 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 pictures of the images of the of the of the place of the news. Yeah, good question. Um, I think it is right for them to stay with stories when something like this happens because you can't assume that anybody is going to consume news on your schedule, that they will just tune in at, say, 3 o'clock, watch 15 minutes of news, and then come back in a few hours when you've got something more to report. People tune in all the time, and in a competitive news environment, people expect to see the big story that everyone's talking about, and they want to know what you know already. So it's, um, you know, it would be nice to think that we lived in a world where everybody came to the news at 6 p.m. to find out what they wanted to know and then went back to their lives, but that's just not the news environment we live in anymore. Right, right. Uh, okay, so uh, you think uh, it is okay with uh, broadcasting uh, the news continuously? Absolutely, yes. Okay, perfect. Um, well, um, the 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 mistakes I, uh, were mostly factual mistakes about the data available. But um, do you think there were there were mistakes, uh, ethical mistakes in the coverage, because uh, the the uh, the interviews that a lot of reporters made uh, with the children, with the students of the of the um, elementary school, um, generate a lot of criticism. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I, besides of the factual mistakes of the of the media networks, you think there were also uh, ethical mistakes? That's a, that's a really interesting question. You know, there are guidelines for interviewing children that most ethical and responsible reporters follow. You're not supposed to interview children without an adult present. You should try to get down onto their level to talk to them. You shouldn't try to coach them through answers. You shouldn't really ask them for factual accounts because kids can't always differentiate between facts and feelings. And one of the faculty members at Pointer who specializes in television news looked at a lot of the coverage, and he found it all to be pretty square and good in terms of interviewing kids. We didn't see a lot of stuff where people were um, were doing a, were doing a bad job of interviewing kids. Now, some people think that you should not interview children at all, and that's a totally different and I think totally valid viewpoint. But it's it's not unethical to in itself to interview children as long as you are trying to do it the right way. Um, another issue that people bring up sometimes is should you report the name of the killer? There's some. There's almost inevitably in a situation like this a movement to um, ask networks or to ask news outlets not to say the killer's name with the belief that that will inspire further crimes because people get sort of famous. And um, my feeling on that is we need to know as much as we can about these people if we are ever going to do something about this epidemic of violence in our country that keeps leading to these mass shootings. I want to know everything I can about these people and maybe at some point we'll figure out some kind of some some sort of response that we as a society can muster to to these things. Okay, Andrew. Um... Mm, thank you, thank you uh, for the interview. Um, your answers were uh, very clear, uh, very constructive. Mm, 
and I think your perspective brings uh, a, a lot uh, for us, uh, for the people who are uh, trying to become uh, journalists in the future. Um, and again, I, wa I want to thank you. Thank you, Diego. Have a, have a wonderful afternoon, and thanks for talking to me. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye-bye.